today we are going to talk about divorce so divorce has been said by the prophet to be the most disliked lawful thing in the sight of god however it is available and easily carried out by the uh, husband pronouncing it there is a retarding mechanism of menstrual cycle but divorce can be affected after this then there is a further waiting period of 3 months or until child birth for pregnant women within which the married couple could reconsider and the wife remains in the marital home as the quran says you do not know god may bring a change of situation there could be a change of hearts so within this waiting period the husband can revoke the divorce be he pronounced by word or deed after the waiting period the divorce becomes final but if the couple reconcile and then later on divorce is resorted to again the same procedure as described above will pertain if divorce is pronounced for a third time it has been proved beyond doubt that this unhappy marital situation should not continue any longer the husband may not marry his divorced wife again unless she happens to marry someone else in between if that second husband were to die or to divorce her it becomes possible for the first husband to enter into marriage with her again so there is a freedom of action within limits and this is also the quranic position during marital difficulties thus we find there is no blame on you for doing such and such and on the other hand these are the bound um, bound which you must, uh, must not cross in two pages for example we have the statement there is no blame on you repeated seven times but also there are bounds mentioned this gives freedom of action to deal with the numerous situations that can arise at a different times and under different cultures so the flexibility of islamic law in this respect is remarkable in fact whenever divorce is mentioned in the quran revocation is recommended and whenever revocation is recommended we find the statement if they can uphold the limited Uh, limits set by the god this is a uh, conditional upon no harm being caused a uh, continuation of marriage must involve the original objective of affection and mercy establishing rights and observing the limits uh, set by god if this is not possible then it is better for husband and wife to leave each other and if they separate god will give to each out of his boundless resources something that would be better for them This is stated in the Arabic in a conditional sentence which is understood in the Quran to be a promise from God and he does not break his promises divorce thus will be affected in order to start solid marriages and to strengthen the marriage institution itself after divorce the original state obtains that marriage becomes highly recommended for any muslim and becomes an obligation for those who cannot live without exercising their sexual rights so during a marriage difficulties the quran keeps repeating if you believe in god and the day of judgment or remember that god is watching over you remember that he knows better than you but be conscious of god and know that he has knowledge of everything in the middle of divorce negotiation and financial statement etc when people can be uh, bitter the quran interrupts the discussion to state in one verse keep up your daily prayer and stand before god in obedience before it resumes the discussion again divorce then carries no stigma whatsoever in whatsoever in islam nor does any attach to divorces who wish to remarry and resume their married sex life the quran considers that to prevent them remarrying would drive them to doing what is forbidden and as islam wishes to build a moral society it provides the institution that would help toward achieving that end thus the quran recognizes that those who have been used to married life are particularly likely to need it more and forbid women families from interfering and preventing divorced women from remarrying their previous husband as stated in chapter number 2 verse number 32 do not prevent her from remarrying her husband if they have come to an honorable ag- agreement this is enjoined on those of you 
who believe in God and the last day, it is more honorable for you and more pure. God knows and you do not. So when a woman or a man becomes divorced, the same original instructions to get married and for society to bring about the marriage of unmarried members obtain. In this respect, there is an obvious difference between the Quran and the Gospel. In Mark 10, uh, verse number 11 and 12, Christ says, Whoever divorces his wife and marries other than her, he will be committing adultery. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries someone else, she will have committed adultery. And in Matthew chapter 5th verse number 32, But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. Also in Luke chapter 18 verse number 16, In spite of these clear statements, since 1983, the Anglican Church has allowed divorces to be remarried in church, influenced by the result of changes in English divorce law in the late 1960s. Uh, now we'll talk about the woman and the divorce in Islam. So far, we have discussed men's rights to divorce. However, women can also instigate divorce. They can obtain divorce by mutual consent. Uh, in cases of cruelty, abandonment, or harm, or if a husband fails to meet his obligations of maintenance, in these later cases, the woman should apply to the court the husband is responsible for maintenance during marriage and for a period after the marriage. He is also responsible for his children's maintenance. This is itself. This is some restrictions on his exercising his right to divorce lightly without going to the court. The delayed dowry payment, which can be a considerable sum, falls due on divorce and can act as a deterrent to hasty proclamation of divorce. In any case, a woman can stipulate in the marriage contract her right to divorce her husband at any time without his consent. This is recognized in Islamic law and practiced in certain parts of the Muslim world. When discussing family life, marriage, and divorce, the Quran does not simply produce regulations couched in dry legal language. Legal instructions are couched in religious, emotional language, employing a powerful the use of linguistic techniques of persuasion and discussion, uh, dissuasion, uh, such as those uh, already mentioned. If you believe in God and know that you are going to meet Him, or remember that God is watching over everything and He has uh, full knowledge and full power over you that is better and purer for you, He knows and you do not know. Marriage and divorce in Islam are protected by law by society and by strong appeal to the belief in God and the hereafter.